how we doing? We're going to be looking at the Melconic VTA6S right here, this beauty. Some people call it R2D2, but it was just a classic from Melconic as a retail bulk grinder. And I picked it up on the cheap, but of course, whenever you get something used like this, uh, it needs a lot of cleaning, you need to inspect it. Uh, particularly, or first thing I noticed was that some of the foam, the foam that protects from the coffee grounds falling out or falling into the motor chamber, the foam was just worn out over age. And so I picked up some foam from Melconic Direct. I need to get a couple more pieces, but I'm gonna show up in the hopper chamber um, how we replace some of the foam. And I just couldn't find much research on this particular machine when I was looking online. So I wanted to create a couple videos in case anyone else out there has a VTA6 and uh, really wants to take care of their baby. So we're gonna be pulling it apart. I'll try to take some photos along the way and give some descriptions. So online, uh, if you search for the VTA and uh, specifically put in PDF, you can get some of the original documentation. I can link to that and uh, provide some of those files as well. What I was really excited about was when I found the actual build sheet. And so this goes through all of the schematics, all of the parts that are in this particular machine, how you assemble it and pull it apart. So I've had this machine apart already once. Not only do I want to replace my burrs, which is just good standard practice, um, some of the foam was wearing out. And that concerned me because one, foam is cheap and easy to replace, but two, I don't want foam particles getting in with my coffee particles. So you've got foam up here around the adjustment collar, and then you've got some here where the grinds come out. There's also some more on the inside, including this little uh, donut piece. They call it the donut, which was really worn out and just brittle uh, inside between the hopper chamber and the actual grinding chamber where the discs are. So I'm gonna show uh, some of the replacement there. We're gonna replace the donut and then uh, this long piece of foam that will uh, go in front of the grinding adjustment. Now to pull this top piece off, the only thing that's obstructing us now is this lever. So we're going to pull this up and then as we lift it, we can kind of slide it forward. Okay, now this piece here has a couple different Allen screws that hold it together. My adjustment, I actually want to adjust the grind on this as well. I'm running a little finer than it should be. Um, and so we do that with an Allen wrench and a screw. Let me see if I can get in real close right here. Forgive the professional filming we got going on here. Okay, so there's a screw. There you go, a, a hex head screw right in here and we're gonna adjust that. You can see how this foam is just all torn apart. It's really in bad shape. And so I don't want that foam getting into my grinder. I don't want it getting into my coffee. And also as we go around these burrs right here. There is a hex head screw. We're not going to mess with that though. There's another one on this opposite side. We don't need to mess with that. So once we, once we loosen this guy, this is actually the screw that holds the key. And so this key is where I make my adjustments. If I want to go a little more coarse or a little more fine, I'm going to make those subtle adjustments here. Over here, this was on my French press, and so I'm going to make a small adjustment later. And then we're going to unscrew this red piece. That's going to give us the top of our burr, and we'll take it from there. All right, I got this torn apart just a little more, laid out some parts, and uh, wanted to show a few of those items. I'm going to try to zoom in here. That's the bottom, so when you put these back together, it's gonna say untin on the bottom and nothing on the top. That's for the left and the right. That'll keep you going the right direction there. And then all we need to pull apart the top here um, is a five millimeter 
hex head wrench, uh, Allen wrench, and so we're going to be pulling that apart real quick. Here on the side, that'll take out the key. So this will lift right off once you get that out. Should lift right off. Okay. So here we have this guy. You can see that foam ripped apart. And then this is the key that holds it in place. Then the top burr set here, just like a lot of burrs, I'm going to unscrew this. Going counterclockwise to unscrew. This is very big and heavy, and it screws in deep. So this grinder, uh, even though the burrs are a little old on it, I am really impressed with the consistency. And I think part of that is just the heavy build. You know, you've got this machine, uh, these burrs spinning so fast. And so with a 120 millimeter burr, you've got a huge surface that can cut a lot of coffee. But then also just, I mean, the thickness of this steel and the entire unit, it weighs almost 100 pounds. It's 42 kg. Um, just incredible stability. So... Whenever you have the burrs off, it's always a great time to clean them. You can clean with a brush. You can uh, you know, take a maybe a, a knife and uh, just work into some of the grooves. You don't want to be too aggressive with the burrs, but at the same time, uh, these are really strong. This is a tool grade steel, and so you can clean those off really nice once you have this all open. Be careful because even the edges of the threading is sharp. But just getting in there and cleaning that out, I didn't actually have to clean this out in order to put my foam back in. That's the purpose of this video. But uh, I did want to get in there and make some adjustments, just kind of show how this guy comes out. I think it's good education. This VTA6 model, uh, it is rated for Turkish grinding coffee. Now they sell separate discs that you can get. They have a Turkish disc, they have an espresso disc. I think just because of the size and the versatility of this machine, uh, you are able to you are able to specify your use case. So if you're always doing espresso and you want to use it, or uh, Turkish, then you can. It'll just extend the burr life. But the general burrs that they sell as well are capable of doing all of these. Now, if you tighten it right down, you can feel metal to metal. You want to back off of that a little bit, maybe a little less than that, uh, half a centimeter. And so then what I'll do is I'll set it at Turkish when I put the, um, the dial setting back on. I'm not going to turn it on on Turkish. That would be pretty dangerous just because I've adjusted it and the burrs are close. So after setting it to what I believe is the tightest, it'll be Turkish espresso, I'm going to pull it over to French press, percolator, and that's when I'll turn on the machine, when it's been opened from this tight position that I'm starting with. So here the donut ring is just going to drop right on top here. That's an easy replacement. And then this, um, I'm going to have to actually peel this off and then I'm going to glue it or stick it. I'm going to find a good way to do that. This didn't come with an adhesive and so I'll find a proper adhesive and then be right back. All right, we're, uh, I cleaned up the face of this and what I used was a 220 grit. Um, this is aluminum and so you don't want to be too aggressive with it and you can always start with a fine sandpaper and then you can move to something more coarse but if you uh, if you start with a 400 or a 300 and then work your way to a 200 that's much safer than just starting at like a 60 or a 100, you'll create some really deep scratches in this soft metal. I was also careful with my knife. First scraping some of this and then I sanded it and you can see I left some of it behind. Um, I actually wanted something to kind of stick to and so I have applied some Elmer's rubber cement. Like I said, there was no specific adhesive that came with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this through the proper hole for the uh, 
grind adjustment lever and then I'm gonna press it down onto the others sorry under the faces there it's hard to work and think and talk all at the same time okay we're getting real high tech here now but what I needed was to flip this upside down so that the spring locking mechanism on the uh, grind adjustment could be held by those heavy-duty legs and then uh, just use my two clamps here on the right and the left to kind of hold the ends of the foam in and by doing so I was able to uh, use this highly specialized tool and apply just a little extra just a little extra glue just to these corners here um, even kind of around this bend here I don't want to create any obstruction but I did want to put just some extra adhesive to some of those key points and then I'm gonna let it dry and I think once it dries uh, we should have pretty good contact all around here all right here we are after a couple hours I let the glue dry I actually use some super glue gel as well you can get a hold of that at the dollar store for 99 cents but I just wanted to make sure I got some good glue on the corners so that uh, this wouldn't peel but the rubber cement did seem to hold and as much as I hate using rubber cement and super glue on something that you know I hate to admit it but inside of a coffee grinder you sometimes have to use chemicals that you wouldn't prefer I also can highly recommend uh, Fast Orange as a cleaner. So in terms of cutting grease, getting off old coffee residue, uh, that's a natural product that I learned. You know, this is this is farm boy fixing. And then here we see the old foam. You can see how it was really broken, disintegrated. And we've got the new one on our adjustment collar. We've got the new donut up inside. So we're ready to reassemble. Like I said before, I turned it to, uh, I tightened it up and then backed off just half a centimeter, if that. So we're going to drop this back on the top. And because it's tight, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the Turkish setting so that when we open it up, then we'll be safe. If I line it up, that's going to be at a one, that's at my Turkish. So I'm going to go ahead and use my pin and bolt to secure this in place. Got our Allen wrench. going to tighten this down and then that'll hold the key this is like a key that holds the collar in place all right so now it's on my Turkish setting I'm gonna dial it back so that I'm ensuring that I'm opening up that burr chamber right now it's really tight and as I come to French press percolator I'm gonna open it up so that's just to make sure that there's no chance I have metal on metal. Let's put it clear over on percolator just to work back. And drop some old beans in there. This is the moment of truth. Only downfall to this amazing grinder is you got to use a lot of beans when you calibrate it because it grinds so fast. Yeah, that's looking good. That's looking real good. I don't know if we can get down there. Go! That was a VTA 6SW.